Thanks, Mrs. P. You will find one Jack waking me up. You know I'm on nights. Just a sec. Yeah, OK, the checkers then. Yes, I heard. The flat parcel back of your wardrobe. Yeah, I'll find it. Mm. Look, don't waste time talking. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Police officers, we'd like a word about your lodger, Bandit, Jack Bandit. Ah, uh -huh. won't you come in, please? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Melville, Fast Chambers. Oh, can I speak to Mr. Farr, please? Hmm? Oh, Barrett, Jack Barrett. Thank you. He's quite a giant killer, this Major Humphreys. How long has he been running his head against this particular brick wall? Three years, Mr. Farr. Ever since the Rural District Council designated his land for acquisition as a housing estate. Well, he's in the right, you know. It's beyond their powers under the 57 Housing Act. He's strangled in red tape. Do you think we should take it on, sir? The Major's funds must be running a bit low. Who are his solicitors? Hanbury and Wilcox. But don't worry about that, if I were you. The point is, the Major's right, the Ministry's wrong, and I should like to make them squirm. Hello? Mr. Jack Barrett for you, Mr. Farr. He says it's very urgent. All right, William. Uh, telephone Major Humphreys' solicitors, arrange a meeting sometime next week. Very good, sir. Put him through. Barrett, if I hear from you again, I shall inform the police. Do you understand? That's absolutely final. Any too happy. Was that ballot coming back? Yes. You'd hear a pin fall on the feather, P.H. Compensation for dead eyes, dear boy. Two thousand pounds. Two thousand three hundred. All right, but what are you going to do? Did the police come? Yes, I had to dip out pretty smartish. Did you get the parcel? Yes, it's in your bag under here. The point is, what are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. I look, just go to a cinema. Sit it out till it's dark. No, no. What then? Oh, better you don't know than you can't tell them. I wouldn't give you away. <sighs> They'd twist it out of you. No, then. Well, oh, wouldn't, mate. Look. I'll be all right now, Eddie. Thanks for bringing the parcel. No, no, you stay and finish my beer. Well, watch yourself now. Yeah. What's the matter with boy, Eddie? Oh, it's all right. You get Barrett? No, sir. Give us a slip. Sorry, sir. Sorrow never arrested anyone, Sergeant. No, sir. Find anything in his room? Nothing worth a penny, sir. Clean, tidy, very bare. I had a talk with the landlady. Boy never went anywhere. Hardly a shirt to his name. Lived out of tins in his room. This has a familiar ring, Brady. 
Yes, sir. When you bring him in, we shall find the answer. Send out a general alert. Yes, sir. Get on with it, Brady. Yes, sir. I might have been to. Oh, yes. It's about this charity subscription I'm running. Charles, you've made a fortune for your shareholders. Why don't you ask them to stump up a bit? I've tried, my dear fellow, but they're most uncooperative. <laughs> Hello, Mandrake. Charles. Hello, Pa. I I've seen your exhibition. Congratulations. I thought the industrial photographs were absolutely splendid. Thank you. Have you seen this show? No, I haven't. Well, you should. It really is excellent. Excuse me, my lord. Telephone call for you, sir. Who is it? Mr. Barrett. Oh, uh, not in, Thompson. Want a drink for lunch? Hmm. Better let me get them. You'll need all your money for Charles' subscription. <laughs> oh. So you've turned up again, boy. Hello, Miss Benham. I want to see Mr. Doe. Is he in? I'll see. So the prodigal's returned, Miss Benham. Looked us up again, eh? Can I speak to you? Shall I say yes, or shall I say no? Please, Harold. All right. I don't hold malice. Let's hear what you've got to say. Come along. Why aren't you working? Got the afternoon off. Very nice. Just going to make a cup of tea. Harold, I want you to promise me something. It's important. Promise? Well, it's waited six months. Surely you can wait a little longer. No, it can't. It's got to be now. Now? Are you dictating to me? Harold, listen, please. I said please once, boy. It didn't have much effect, did it? Oh, this is different. Oh, I see. You've got to promise me you'll never tell anyone. Tell? Have I got anything to tell? Well, yes. You remember, back last spring, when I, when I left. Oh, that. Oh, well, there's no fun in gossip unless you can mention names. Well, you never did, did you? Not that secrets don't have a horrid way of leaking out. Did you find out the name, Harold? Did you? I must know! What do you mean, must? I don't think I meant to tell you. Just sweat it out. I know what horrid imaginings are. Now you're going to have your share. You look at me as if you hate me. That's a very good guess. For God's sake, get out! Come back when I'm in a better temper! Sorry, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Farr has left. No, I haven't seen him since lunch. Hmm. Yes, I agree, but by inclination, we're all individualists. Every man wants to own his own business. But the pressure of modern commerce is gradually pushing the independent trade out of existence. Now, my plan is to let them keep their autonomy, but at the same time have all the advantages the combines enjoy through an associated purchasing company. You haven't heard a damn word I've been saying. Yes, yes, I have. It's a fine plan. It'll help a lot of people. Well, yeah, because you're trained to listen with one ear and look with the other. <laughs> you really care about people, don't you? Yes. Yes, of course I do.
sorry, Fip. I know you don't like people coming to the showroom. Not me, old mate. The powers of be are keen on social calls. Fip, can you drive me out of London? Sorry, sport. Couldn't have come to worse time. I'm, uh, I'm scheduled to deliver a crate out at uh, Richmond when I finish here. Uh, where do you want to go? Kelworth, Newtown. Oh, flag a lift from a lorry. Be all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be all right. Good evening, Mr. Farr. Evening, Mr. Brooks. My wife home? Huh? She's not back from the clinic yet. Oh. Her brother's here. Oh, good. There you are, Mel. Hello, Scott. How are you? Nice to see you. Felt a bit lonely. Ronnie went back to school today. Never mind. Only ten weeks, at least. Good. Thanks. Thanks. What's all this about clinics? Laura having trouble? No, oh, no. Only of her own making. She's taking a spare time job working with difficult children. Oh. Apparently, she's rather good at it. If you're going to court with that rubbish, I'll do your client no good. Brent's wife will get costs, custody and alimony, which is exactly what she wants. Selfish bitch. No, I, I, I'd be discretion. Place the whole of her life on the bench in front of the judge. Harry Brent won't do that. Then I should tell him to find somebody else to lose the case for him. You would, too. Yeah, damn right I would. Mel? Yes, in here, darling. Hello, darling. Hello, Scott. Hello. And how are the little idiots today? It's not a lunatic asylum. Isn't it? I thought it was. Very funny. Did you get Ronnie off all right? Yes, miserable. Why don't you stay and have dinner with us? Can't, thanks. I'm just off. I've got a lot of work tonight. A Campbell brief fell into my lap last week. Lord knows why they call it a brief. It never is. What will you do about dinner? Oh, don't worry. I've got some stuff in the fridge. Are you sure? Yes, of course. All right. Good night. Good night. Take care of each other. Good night. Good night. I worry about Scott living on his own with Ronnie to bring up. He seems lost since Helen died. I think he ought to get married again. Ronnie needs a mother. Why don't you tell him? You're his sister. I have. He doesn't seem to want to. Perhaps he's not in love with anybody. Well, he ought to be. <laughs> That's typical feminine logic. Do you love me? Yes, I do. A little reassurance helps. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Jack? Hi, Sylvie. Here. What? In here. Where have you sprung from, Jack? I want to get down to the coast. What's stopping you? Sylvie, if Jack wants to shake down for the night, he's welcome. No. I told you last time he came, I wouldn't have him anymore. You're not going to stop me having what I like in my own house. Don't quarrel over me, please. He's staying, Sylvie. Not with us. Why can't he stick with his own sword? You can come home, Frank Jeffries, when you've got rid of him. I, I never knew Sylvie felt like that about me. What's up, Jack? I'm in terrible trouble, Frank. Can I help? I've got to get out of the country. I can buy a job as a steward on a ship if I can get to Southampton. I need 20 quid, though. I haven't got it tonight, but I want it to you. First thing in the morning. Will you? Of course I will. <sighs> Thanks a lot, Frank. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about it. No, 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 no. I'll say goodbye then. No, no, I'll walk with you to the coast road. You can tell me all about it. Get it off your chest. It'll do you good. Well, if that's the way of it, you're in a hell of a mess. Have you told me everything? Everything. Now, do you understand why I took the money? Of course. I wish you'd stay and face the music. No. I'll go to the police with you. No, they'd twist hell out of me. 
Make me say why I took it. It's bound to come out in the end. Look, I know what I'm doing. I'll be off now, Frank. I'll soon catch a lift. Goodbye and thanks. What, for a measly 20 quid? No, for knowing me all these years. Still being a friend. Well, it used to be witches. At least they don't burn you. <laughs> Good luck, Jack. You'll never forgive me, will you? It's not your fault you haven't got enough brains to understand. Oh, you have, I suppose. I feel sorry for him, that's all. Sorry for that? Yes. Jack used to talk to me. He's very lonely, deep inside. He hasn't got what you and I've got, Sylvie. Hello? No, this is Mrs. Farr speaking. What name? Barrett? Well, where's he calling from? Oh, very well. I'll accept the call. Go ahead, caller. Mr. Farr? Barrett. Jack Barrett. It's urgent. I'll call again at 8 in the morning. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll give him a message. Someone for me. A young man, Barrett. He was phoning from Kelworth. He reversed the charge, so I thought I ought to accept the call. What did he want? He'll phone again tomorrow morning, about eight o'clock. He sounded quite desperate. This Barrett, is it a case? It is now. Never mind. Let's go. Views and range, no good living on my payroll. You can't hang diamond on a table. Mmm, a beautiful sight. If you don't pass out, when the squeeze is tight. My skin During the last seven months in your job as wages clerk, you've been drawing the salaries of five fictitious workmen. All told, you've appropriated around 2,300 pounds. Where is it? You've opened a bank account, a post office savings book, haven't you? What name did you give? It's not enough that I said I took the money. Your employers want it back. Where is it? Uh, I've, I've spent it. What on, son? There's nothing new in your wardrobe. You live cheaply. Eat cheaply. Who's been putting the squeeze on you? Come on, open up. We don't like blackmail any more than you do. 
Look, I took the money. I stole it and I spent it. That's all. We mean to find out what's behind this, Barrett. You've got yourself in a real jam, son. Look, far better come clean than we can help you. Oh, we're wasting our time, sir. All right, Barrett. Let's see what little solitary contemplation will do. Get in a sensible frame of mind. We'll talk to you again later. All right, off you go. Mac! Put him down. That boy's not a thief. More victim than criminal, if my supposition is right. I'm always worried, sir, when I find myself allowing the motive to mitigate the crime. Yes, our jobs would be much easier if we just had to deal with the Bill Sykes of this world. Come in. The stuff they took from the drain, it's a scrapbook, sir. Now we've got it pieced together. Dinner. Must stoke up, you know. What's going to happen to me? I'll talk to you again later when you've had a rest. Why don't you sleep a bit? Put your feet up. That's right. Rest. Shut your eyes. Sort out your answers. You'll have to tell the truth in the end. May as well make up your mind to it. Police station have been on the telephone, sir. A detective inspector Harris. Well, he'd like you to drop in, sir. Oh, it's on my way home. What about him? The inspector didn't say so, but I got the impression it was a matter of some importance. Well, telephone my wife, will you? Tell her I'll be a bit late. Yes, sir. And there's another thing. Oh? A letter from the Lord Chancellor's office. Don't tell me we've been turned out. <laughs> Hardly, sir. Our friends think you should have taken silk some time ago. Being a QC can be a risky business, William. Many a good junior practice has failed in the front row. I'm not worried about that, sir. I'm sure we shall be quite at home there. Oh, I'm glad you think so. These have been in water. Yes, the boy tried desperately to get rid of them. We had to have the drain up. Newspaper cuttings, pictures carefully preserved in a scrapbook. And all pertaining to you and your career, sir. Did you know Barrett? Yes, I met him some time ago. He, uh, he thumbed a lift one night. He said he'd missed the last bus to Fulham. It was on my way home, so I uh, dropped him off. Did you see him again? Yes. He's working on a building site quite near my chambers. I often used to see him standing down there at the traffic lights, the Strand Waterloo intersection. It seemed churlish not to give him a lift now and again, so I did. Then I stopped. Oh? Why did you do that, sir? I came to the conclusion that he was waiting for me. Wet or fine, he was always there. I see. So that was the end of it? No, he uh, started writing, telephoning. I destroyed his letters, warned him not to call. We believe that Barrett was being blackmailed, sir. been stealing from his firm for months, over 2,000 pounds. There's nothing to show for it. He has less than half a dollar in his pocket when we picked him up. Did he give you any hint, any impression that he was being blackmailed? No. Then it started after you finished seeing him. It would seem that way. Have you any idea what Barrett might have been paying to keep quiet? No idea at all. Oh, you knew, of course, that he was a homosexual. I had formed that impression. You know also, sir, that as many as 90% of all blackmail cases have a homosexual origin. I follow your train of thought, Inspector. But I wouldn't know if it applied in this particular instance. You can't hazard a guess, sir. No. 
There's no doubt that a law which sends homosexuals to prison offers unlimited opportunities for blackmail. Well, thank you, sir. You've been extremely helpful. Thank you. Do you, um, do you have any line on the blackmailer? No, sir. We couldn't get a word out of Barrett, which is a pity. Blackmail's the simplest of crimes when we have the cooperation of the victim. Almost impossible when we haven't. Can I, uh, can I see Barrett? I'd like to talk to him. That's not possible, sir. Barrett hanged himself in his cell this afternoon. He's dead. Well, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Stone. The inspector's free now. I'll take you up in a moment. Thanks. This way, Mr. Farm. It was Eddie Stone, sir. We fetched him to identify the body. Stone? He works as a ticket clerk at Two Foster's Tube Station. Friend of Barrett's. Oh. Good night, sir. was being blackmailed? No. I just thought he was brassed off. How well did Barrett know Mr. Melville Farr? Who? The gentleman I was with when I saw you in the hall. I, I don't know. I, I've never seen him before. Boy, didn't mention anyone called Farr to me. I see him. Your friend was very secretive. Didn't he confide in you? No. Why should he? Look, can I go now? I don't see why not. If you do decide to remember anything Barrett said, let us know. Blackmail's a serious business. So is murder. He's right. This blackmailer as good as murdered Barrett. I warned him for it doesn't any more damage. Did Far recognize him downstairs? No, sir. Nevertheless, whatever the black man had on Barrett concerned Farr. Of that I'm certain. But Mr. Farr's married, sir. Those are famous last words, Bridie. He took Barrett into his car. No harm in giving the boy a lift? Maybe not. It's a subsequent lift that worry me. Check on Barrett's background, find out if they're in relations, and tell Sergeant Hoyt to doubt his son is suit. Very good, sir. If only these unfortunate devils would come to us in the first place. If only they led normal lives, they wouldn't need to come at all. If the law punished every abnormality, we'd be kept pretty busy, Sergeant. Even so, sir, this law was made for a very good reason. If it were changed, other weaknesses would follow. I can see you're a true Puritan, Bridie, huh? Well, there's nothing wrong with that, sir. Of course not. But there was a time when that was against the law, you know. Ah, very good, sir. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, darling. Sorry I'm late. Did, um, <clears throat> did William telephone you? Yes. He said you had some marvellous news. He could hardly contain himself. Marvellous news? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, the Lord Chancellor accepted my application. That's wonderful. We must celebrate. I, I don't feel very much like celebrating tonight, if you don't mind. Mel, are you all right? Is something wrong? William said you were so pleased. What happened on the way home? He said you had to go to Fulham Police Station. Were you in an accident or something? No, no. no I'm all right. I'm sorry. I'll go and run your bath. Who else? 
Here's your milk. Thanks. Oh, there's some letters by the phone for you. When did they come? Monday or Tuesday. Took them in with mine, I forgot. Fire's taking silk. That's right. QC at 40. There's no stopping the blighter. We'll see him on the bench yet. Well, he's got a big enough practice. He'll be able to afford it. Mr. Farr? What do you want? I want to talk to you. I'll see people by appointment. I think you ought to see this photograph. That's what boys pay to keep quiet. You and him. I just found it. You'd better come upstairs. Good morning, Mr. Farr. Good morning, William. If there are any calls, you take them. I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, sir. We're in court this morning. Yes, sir. I know we are. It's clear enough now. Boy stole all that money to pay for the negative. But the bastard's never sent it. Just another print as a reminder. How, uh, How could they have taken this? They were obviously trailing boy. Telephoto lens. It's an old dodge. You were in the car. You wouldn't ever see them. You've shown this to the police. Well, of course I haven't. But that's what he was trying to prevent. Don't you see? Yes, I see. I see. But why did he have to go and... Hang himself? He knew the police would get it out of him in the end. He didn't want to involve you. You'll be all right. Yes. He should have come to you. He wasn't big enough to be on his own like that. He should have come to you. He did. I thought he was trying to blackmail me. I wouldn't even talk to him. Jeez. Poor old boy. He didn't stand much of a chance between you and the blackie, did he? No. Well, I'd better go. Uh... I just thought you'd want to know. No, Stone, wait a minute. You know who was blackmailing him? No. Well, I'm going to find out. And you're going to help me. What for? They're packing in now. Now that he's dead. I mean, they're scared of tackling you, otherwise they would have done it in the first place. Why go looking for trouble? If I hadn't been trying so bloody hard to avoid trouble, this might never have happened. But it has. And they're not going to get away with it. Well, if you dig this over, it could end in one hell of a scandal. And it wouldn't only be you who came down. I know that. I, I can't help you. I don't know anything. You don't have to know anything. All you have to do is to watch. Watch for fear. Fear is the oxygen of blackmail. Barrett was paying, others are. Find me one. You're crazy, Mr. Farr. You're not thinking of... Stone, are you going to help me or not? Okay. I'll listen around. I'd like to get them too. Just remember, if you do run them down, you'll bring yourself down as well. Call me here. I'll call you. Bye. 
should be there first thing in the morning, PA. Good. There they go, PH, homing pigeons. Hope they come back with their little beaks bulging. Let's have a Chevy at the checkers. I love to hear the chat. They'll all be talking about Boy Barrett. Who'd have thought he'd go and do a thing like that? Who would? It's shaken me, PH. I wish we could go back to Cheltenham. Just a while longer, Mickey. We'll wind it up soon. We cross now, don't we? Yes. I'm ready to go to the post, Mr. Doe. Mr. Doe. I'm ready to go to the post. Boy is dead. He hanged himself. It's in the paper. I must go to the post. Will you please come in the shop? No. Close the shop. Down the blinds. Miss Benham, if anyone comes asking questions about Boy. Well, I'm not interested in your affairs, Mr. Doe. I'm just here for the salary on Friday. I only meant to teach him a lesson. I thought he'd come back. I thought he'd come back. Don't know anything except what's in the papers. Oh, God, that's enough, isn't it? Henry the Cone looks like death warmed up. Shh. The troll speaking. She said Barrett never had a penny to bless himself with. What happened to the money? Well, I could answer that in one. Phipps moving up now. Madge is pushing the boat out. Safe for him to come alongside. <laughs> I've lost them now. Put up the glasses, Mickey. A tea or Pepe, please. Not this treat all. Certainly, P.H. Come on, another drink all round. You'll feel better. Thanks, Major. I'll sink a jar. I'm flush this week, modelling for Mandrake. Luxury fridges. Mandrake's good to you. Mm, old pals act. We were in rep together 20 years ago at Bournemouth. <gasps> Not for me, thanks, Madge. I feel like drinking today. Well, I'm off. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. For a man sitting on a gold mine, Henry looks pretty miserable. Henry sold his gold mine. What's what did you say? Yes, bloke over there. He's the estate agent who did the sale. I think I'll slide now, sport. It's long, Madge. Have one with me next time. That'll be the day. Fred. Who's the bloke in the pinstripe? He keeps looking at me. I don't know. He used to come in the week, Chief, when I was there. A real lone wolf. I better go. Let's see you. So long, Eddie. Yeah, cheers. Well, I don't know how you can stand them. Who? Oh. Eddie and Fip and the rest of them. All the same, the whole blooming lot. I thought they amused you. Oh, they're good for a laugh, all right. Very witty at times. Generous, too. I hate the bloody guts. Hey! Well, don't look at me like that. Well, they're just not quite normal, dear. <laughs> What's it matter to you? If they had gammy legs or something, you'd be sorry for them. Sorry for them? Not me. It's always excuses. Every newspaper you pick up, it's excuses. Environment. Too much love as kids. Too little love as kids. They can't help it. Part of nature. Well, to my mind, it's the weak, rotten part of nature. And if they ever make it legal, they may as well license every other perversion. <laughs> Come on, Mickey, this place is getting boring. Let's go and see what the postman brought us. Should be a nice bag today. I think our little efforts might be very well rewarded. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Tomorrow, I hope. Insincere bastard. Well, what else can you be in this game? Eddie? I saw you passing. Soldier shop. Who told you that? Fred of the Checkers. He heard from the estate agent. Why, is it a secret? No, of course not. But I wish people would mind their own business, that's all. 
Anyway, I'm off on Thursday. Eddie, I am sorry about boy. You'll miss him. Yes. If you're sending any flowers, put a few blooms in for me. Yes, I will. Well, goodbye then. Yes. Oh, goodbye. Oh, good luck. Chilly today, sir. Yes. Take a seat, sir. Shan't keep you a minute. Well, I'm not sure it'll lead anywhere. A chap I know has got a good hairdressing business. And he's been acting jumpy lately. Well, now he's suddenly decided to sell up. Yeah, but it could be he's being squeezed as well. What's his address? And his name? I'd like to catch him just before he closes. Yeah, well, I must hang up because I've got customers. Yeah, Henry's of Harborne Street. Right, bye. I'm sorry, sir. We're just closing. This won't take very long. It's a uh, private matter. I'll be off then, Mr. Henry. That's all right, George. I'll close up. Good night. Good night. I understand you're selling this place. Who told you that? You're being blackmailed, aren't you? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. But you are selling this place all the same, aren't you? I haven't told anyone where I'm going. Who are you? And you're afraid of being followed. Who's squeezing you, Henry? I don't know. Who are you? You from the police? No. I'm a friend of someone you used to know. Boy Barrett. I want to know who killed him. You can help me. How do you pay the money? I don't remember. I'm not saying anything. I can't help the way I am, but the law says I'm a criminal. I've been to prison four times. I couldn't go through that again. Not at my age. I'm going to Canada. I've made up my mind to be sensible, as the prison doctor used to say. I don't care how lonely, but sensible. Can't stand any more trouble. I'm sorry about boy Barrett, but he's dead, finished. Nothing can help him now. Barrett's death was murder. Do you want that to go unpunished? Who are you? Melville Farr. I'm a barrister. The blackmailer can't reach you in Canada. Tell me how you pay the money and let me deal with it. It wouldn't help. Do you know anyone else who's paying? No. No. I think you do. I'm not saying another word, Mr. Farr. My number's in the book. If you change your mind, let me know. Not a chance. I've got myself to think of. Nature played me a dirty trick. I'm going to see I get a few years' peace and quiet in return. You've got a big position. They'd listen to you. You ought to be able to state our case. Tell them there's no magic cure for how we are. Certainly not behind prison bars. I've come to feel like a criminal, an outlaw. Do you know what I think, Mr. Farr? I think Boy Barrett's well out of it. We know 
each other. You might say that we're pen pals. Now, they say that you're going away without paying your debts. Bad show, Henry. You can't expect to flourish like the green bay tree. Aye, aye, aye. Don't interrupt. You've been talking to Mr. Melville Farr. What did you tell him? Hmm? I didn't tell him anything. Well, now, now, now think, Henry. What did you tell that fine, upstanding barrister? I didn't tell him anything. <laughs> You're ridiculous, old sordid, you. If you could only see yourself, you look your age tonight, Henry. What a funny color you've gone. I think we'll have a little privacy. You know, I could do a lot of damage here. Five, ten minutes. And you wouldn't have much to sell. Do you stop gaping? There's nothing that a little chat will, could write. All I want is the answer to a simple question. What did you tell Mr. Melville Farr? Oh, hello, Doctor. Evening, Mrs. Farr. You should be off home. I just wanted to see him finish this. Mm, doesn't seem to be much wrong with it now. No, he's been working happily all afternoon. Perhaps this will help him sort it out for himself. Anyway, let me know how he gets on. I'll just give him another five minutes. when I left the place, making a funny noise in his throat. But it looks like we have lost a good subscriber. No. No, I don't think he told Far anything. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Far is showing a lot of interest. I think we ought to find out what he's up to. A cop doing his rounds found the back door unlocked. Henry was lying there with the telephone in his hand. Shop smashed to places. Henry had a weak heart. Did you say he had the telephone in his hand? Yes, that's right. Stone, do you know anybody called Troy Carraway? I've never heard of him. What? Is that something to do with Henry? No? I don't know what's got to do with Henry. But there was rather a curious message at the house tonight. My housekeeper couldn't quite understand it. She said the call sounded drunk or ill or something. But apparently he said Troy or Try Carraway. Could that have been Henry? Carraway. Does it ring a bell? No, wait a minute. I know a chap who gets his hair cut at Henry's. He did, but it's not Carraway, but it's... What it's is like, it? Well, it's like it. He's a famous bloke. Look, and you'll know him, I bet. He's a gallery girl... <laughs> come here. There's a Mr. Melville Farr to see you, sir. Ah, oh, show him in. Mr. Farr, sir. Ah. Oh. Oh, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were in front. I wasn't. I was too late for the play. Yeah, never mind. Take a pew. Thank you. I've enjoyed your performances several times. I saw you and Lee Hunter defend Dr. Porchester. He should have hung, you know. There was a moment when he thought he would. We were all very relieved. Hmm. Well, what can I do for you? I've come round to see if you can help me. Not another charity matinee. I've done two this month already. No, this is something rather more serious, I'm afraid. Ah? This is impertinent. And I may be mistaken, but... Do you ever receive an envelope... like that, containing a demand for money? It's 
Is this some sort of a joke? Would you tell me how you paid? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. I have a, a client in the same situation. I thought you might cooperate and help me to put an end to it. Albert? Sir? Mr. Farr is leaving. Thank you. I can find my own way out. Now, but can you rustle me up an evening standard? Certainly, sir. All right, right away. Yes, right sir, away. Yes. Hello, Tilly. Oh, this is Tiny. Thank God you're at home. I'll be round in 20 minutes. All right? Sir? Been a hairdresser found dead in Harbin Street, just came through on the teleprinter. Shop was broken up, looks like a murder case. Harbin Street, that's West End Central. Have we enough crime in this division for you, Brady? He was a convicted homosexual, sir. I see. There might be a tie up with a Barrett case. If this hairdresser was paying blackmail too. I'm quite as good at guessing as you are, Sergeant. Just get me the facts, will you? Yes, sir. Just one of them would come forward, just one. You're afraid of this sort of violence, sir. Yes, of course, there are only little people. I thought we might have heard from Mr. Father. Mel? The boy in the paper. Barrett, the one that hanged himself in Fulham Police Station. Is that the same boy that phoned here? Yes. Yes, it is. You were there yesterday. Did the police send for you? Yes. Why? Apparently they'd found a book. He'd kept a, a scrapbook. Press cuttings about me. Pictures. Why? Your worship. Who was this boy, Barrett? I gave him a lift occasionally. You never told me. No. Papers say he was a wages clerk. Been stealing from his firm. How did you come to meet a boy like that? Back in the spring. After a late session, the, the last buses had gone. That's only once. You said occasionally. I know, I know what I said. Can't we discuss this without taking the whole place into a battleground? You stopped seeing him and he killed himself. Phil Stain all over again. No. Wasn't the same with Stainer. Barrett was. What was Barrett? When we were married, we had no secrets from each other. I made you a promise then. I haven't broken that promise, if that's what you mean. Why did you stop seeing him? He was getting too fond of me. Are you sure you weren't getting too fond of him? Answer me. I want to know the truth. I want to know why he hanged himself. He was being blackmailed. That's why he stole? Yes. Someone found out he was a homosexual and blackmailed him. That's it. It takes two to make a reason for blackmail. Were you the other man? Were you? Tell me everything I want to know. I don't want you to. I'd rather know than guess. You'd been paying for months to stop copies of this. Going around the temple. 
Why is he crying? I just told him we couldn't see him anymore. So he knew it was the end. And so did you. Look at the picture. There's as much pain in your face as there is in his. You haven't changed. In spite of our marriage and your inmost feelings, you're still the same. That's why you stopped seeing him. You felt for him what you felt for Stainer. That's not true. You were attracted to that boy as a man would be to a girl. Laura, Laura, don't go on. For God's sake, stop. Stop now. I can't stop. I love you too much to stop. I thought you'd love me. If you do, what did you feel for him? I have a right to know. All right, you want to know. I shall tell you. You won't be content until you know, will you? Till you ripped it out of me. I stopped seeing him because I wanted him. Do you understand? Because I wanted him! Now, what goes that done you? When did it begin? From the moment I saw him. You don't call that love? No. If it was love, why should I want to stamp it out? Why would I do that if it was love? His feeling for you? What was that? I don't know. Yes, I, I think perhaps for him, for him, it was love. The only kind of love he could feel. He died for it to protect me. That thought will remain with you for the rest of your life. I don't think there's going to be room for me as well. Oh, yes, my lord. Oh, just one moment, please. Lord Fulbrook, sir. Oh. Thank you, Mrs. Rooks. Miss Charles. Well, we can't you wait till Monday? I must say you make it sound very dramatic. Very well. If you put it on a personal basis. What address? 18, Nightingale Mews. Coming. Paul Brooks waiting inside. Hello, Fogg. Good of you to come. You said it was a matter of life and death. It is to me. You two know each other. Come to cases, Teddy. Come to cases. I'm afraid you upset Tiny at the theatre last night. Ask him who he's working for, Teddy. You seem set on stirring up a lot of trouble. I want you to stop. What exactly has it to do with you, Charles? Well, the demands addressed to Callaway cover the three of us. See? Frankly, I'm surprised. Why? You're a sophisticated man. You know the invert is part of nature. Say that? But I've known you for years, Charles. What is discreet about these things? 
What do you want? Well, I want you to persuade your client to join us. We'll pay the blackmailer off in one nice big sum. Hmm? Any idea who it is? No. It's a filthy thing, extortion. Where'd you leave the money? At the... There you are, Teddy. You haven't done a damn bit of good. Steady, Tiny. Listen, our apparently calm acceptance of this blackmail must seem very extraordinary to you. But do you ever wonder about the law that makes us all victims of any cheap thug who finds out about our natural instincts? Paying blackmail won't alter the law. It'll only encourage the blackmailer. We've got to pay. Tell him, Teddy. Explain. Uh, if we don't pay, ten to one, we land in jail, with our crime so-called damn nearly parallel with robbery with violence. Man-made laws are never perfect. I'm a born odd man out far, but I've never corrupted the normal. Why should I be forced to live outside the law? Because I find love in the only way I can. You're a star, Calloway. People like you set a fashion. If the young people knew how you lived, mightn't they think that an example to follow? Of course, youth must be protected. We all agree about that. But that doesn't mean that consenting males in private should be pilloried by an antiquated law and made meet for blackmail. If you're old enough to vote, you're old enough to choose your own way of life. Many of us reach the grave without arriving at that stage of responsibility. Do you support the law? I am a lawyer. Do you ever hear from the Stainers, Far? I was the old man's secretary. That's how I knew young Stainer killed himself. While you stayed alive, shrouded yourself in virtue, and married Judge Hankin's daughter. Like an alcoholic takes a cure. I thought you were unconscionably put out. Now I see it's the rage of Caliban on seeing his own reflection in the glass. I may share your instincts, but I've always resisted them. That's what cost young Stainer his life. He was a neurotic and an hysteric. Deny me and I'll kill myself. He was always crying wolf. What did happen to Stainer? When we were up at Cambridge together, we became very good friends for a while. He was clever and amusing. But quite unstable and completely possessive. One night he telephoned and said he was going to kill himself. I didn't believe him. He'd said it before. But apparently this time he meant it. And that's all there was to it. All this ancient history isn't getting us anywhere. Did you or didn't you? Who cares? What you've got to do now is to forget any ideas you've got about exposing these people. Bring them down and we come with them. Just pay. You pay, Galloway. I shall make my own decision. Come home, it's cold. Been awake all night? Yes, I've been awake. Looking at myself. When you told me about Phil Stainer, it was over in the past. I was young and conceited, I suppose. I thought marriage would make you content. I was wrong. That impulse is still there. There hasn't been a day that I haven't thanked God for you. Mel, I'm not a life belt for you to cling to. I'm a woman, and I want to be loved for myself. I do love you. If he was alive and standing beside me, who would you choose? You've had your answer to that. But he's still in your heart. I feel completely destroyed. Have coffee tonight. There's a real 
charnel house atmosphere in this place today, Mickey. Ghastly. I should be glad when we can get back to Chowton. We'll go home after we've made the last collection. Shh! Eddie's on his soapbox again. Henry paid rates and taxes on his shop the same as everybody else. But they knew he couldn't go out and call the cops. So he just stood there watching. All these bastards broke up the shop. You don't know it happened that way? It couldn't have happened any other way. Yeah, Fit? I don't like to think about it, old mate. No joy there. Call for you, Mr. Mortimer. Who is it? Some bloke. Said, tell him Sandy. Madge. Good. Oh, what's he drinking? Oh, no more for me, dear. I'm working today, modeling corsets at Hobday and Rouse's. Hope they've got the studio warm. It's always the same. Mink in August and bikinis Christmas. Oh, well, that's life. See you. Yeah, bye. I know. I said, I know. Well, I'll work it. I'll work it. Yeah, somehow. Have a snack. Go on. No, I said it. Look as if you could do with a good stoke up. How much weight you lost in the last month? Be a laugh, wouldn't it? If one of us developed some guts and turned copper's knock. Somebody putting the screws on you, Fit? I never said that. You meant it. Fantasia, sport, Fantasia. Why? Right. I keep your shirt on. I was suggesting you bash round the police station and blow the gap. Oh, just wanted to be sure. Don't you mix me in anything, old mate. I can look after myself. See you. Anybody can come and look at a car. Sport. You can put a penny on the bonnet, sir, and I promise you the coin won't vibrate one iota. Would you drive around the park, Mr. Mortimer? Very good, sir. the old man's will. There's quite a little bit coming to me. What's with you? You're not here for the ride. I knew boy Barrett. Tragic little sport. Came to me when he was on the run. I couldn't do much for him. I was broke. You look broke. You're very realistic. It's a very realistic situation. What have they got on you? Some... Some letters in my handwriting. They're all signed. I can't afford to buy those letters. I can. What's all this generosity in aid of? I want to get in touch with them. They won't get in touch with me. You tell me when your next summons is. I'll go in your place and negotiate for both of us. I wish I had the guts to trust you. You can trust my bank balance. I've had my next summons. Tonight. Smith Place. Eight o'clock. How many letters? Five. Right.
Over here, Mr. Farr. You bring a policeman. <laughs> Not that I care if you have. You see, my motto is different from yours. Mensano incorpori sana. Gotcha. Uh, uh, you wouldn't take long for a magistrate to decide who's got the clean mind in the healthy body. <laughs> ah, I knew the white hope of Cavendish's cars would blab when I saw him joy riding with you in the park. Well, I want to buy his letters and what you've got on me, the negative. I shan't take one without the other. I must remind you, Mr. Farr, that you're in no position to say what you'll do. It's a question of policy with us. We don't usually sell original material. <laughs> it won't be peanuts. I shan't hand over any money until I see the negative and the letters. The question is, how much? <laughs> now, don't push, Mr. Farr. Don't push. We say when. <laughs> We've had this will he or won't he conversation so often that I've met him now and I agree that he's not the subject for continual pressure. Soft for one payment though. Mm, well, no, not too greedy. Uh, he's got a lot at stake. Wife, career. Yes, the more they've got, the more they fight to keep it. <laughs> now, now, now that is a hell of a good idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll watch. Uh, I'll make sure she's out. Oh, <clears throat> it'll only take me a few moments once I'm there. A nice salutary warning. See what'll happen if you blab. Hmm? Okay, well, <laughs> bye. Close it. I've got to go back to the clinic. Better to. It's only whitewash. It'll wash off. What does it mean, Laura? I don't know. Hooligans. Nonsense. Too explicit. This spells oblique blackmail to me. What's behind it? I don't know. Oh, come along. It's beginning to make a pattern. How long have you known? I don't know what you're talking about. Is Mel queer, as they say? You have to make up your own mind about that. I've already done that, my dear. It's time you had someone to talk to. You knew nothing about this boy, Barrett? You didn't suspect anything? No. I suppose in the back of my mind, I, I've always dreaded this, but Mel seems so happy and satisfied with our marriage. Successful. Well, he's been successful, all right. But what has this marriage meant for you? Have you been satisfied? Yes. Yes. He's very kind and understanding. That's not what I mean. Have you found real love, Laura? Yes, I... I think so. It's all I've known. How dared he marry you? There was nothing he didn't tell me. I married Mel knowing everything about him. How could you possibly understand what it might mean? You were 19. I loved him then. In spite of everything, I... I can't stop loving him. You can't understand that, can you? No. I don't think I can. My dear, I've prosecuted and I've defended this offence. Either way, it brings havoc. Mel hasn't committed an offence. Perhaps not. But the rot's still there. Look how he's behaving now. What's happened to his integrity? Mel's to become a QC, Laura. Eventually a judge, even. Is he going to sit on the bench knowing that he himself has covered up a serious crime? But he's done nothing, I tell you. 
The crime I'm talking about is blackmail. If he doesn't go to the police about this, he'll be covering up blackmail. But if he does go to the police, it, it's the end of his career. Everything he's ever worked for. It's the end of himself if he doesn't. He can either go to the police, which apparently he's reluctant to do, or he can deal with it himself. Oh, yes, Mel's clever enough to run them down, turn their own weapon against them, do as I say or I'll hand you over. And what does that make him? A blackmailer. No better than they are. You mean you can't avoid being destroyed, whichever happens? Yes, I do, Laura. And I don't want you to be destroyed with him. You're young enough to start again. Clear off. Leave Mel to fight this battle on his own. You don't really think I could do that? It's not only you I'm thinking of. I've got a son. And I'm not going to have Ronnie here worshipping Mel, knowing what I do. I think you better go. Perhaps I have. Well, I'm up the road if you want me. Hobson sent it over. She thought it might be important. Um, I'm going out. I can't cancel my lunch date and... Uh, Apologize, Mr. Canning. someone been to the house? No. What does it mean? There was something on the garage door. Big letters in paint. What did it say? I don't want to tell you. What did it say? Thighs. Queer. What does it mean? All these instructions? Where to take the money and how to pay it. The dirty words on the garage door are a final test of strength. They, they were a gentle reminder that you could be included in this failed operations, too. Are you... Are you going to keep the appointment? A man who was paying blackmail is hardly likely to make an ideal QC. I'm sure your brother Scott will tell you that. Oh, never mind what Scott says. He's a perfect barometer of public morality. In any case, he's right. But if I hand the blackmailer over to the police, it won't just be the end of my career. It'll be the end of everything. And our ugly little story will appear in daily installments on millions of breakfast tables. On the other hand, if I pay, I buy security of a sort. What are you going to do? For the moment, I'm going up to town. I've taken enough away from you already. When I come home, I shan't expect to find you there. Just leave an address with Mrs. Brooks so that I... so that she can send anything on to you.
William, come down here a moment, will you? Yes, sir. Close the door. I'm uh, afraid you, you've got to prepare yourself for a bit of a shock. I'm sorry to worry you with this, but uh, I'm quite sure how this is all going to end, and I, I don't want it to burst in your face. I see the implication, sir. But this couldn't be the basis of any charge. I know. That's the tragedy of it. The boy thought it could. It wouldn't mean anything if he weren't crying. As it is, I suppose it looks everything. Yes. It's a very good likeness. We must get the negatives. Thank you, William. I expected at least one question. Don't you have any? I've believed in your integrity for ten years, sir. I can see no reason to question it now. Get me Fulham Police Station. It's all there. Ask Melbourne to pick them up. Get them red-handed when they collect the loot. Right, sir. Yeah? Who? Bradley. Listen to this call. Put Mr. Farr on. No, sir, not really surprised. I thought you'd be calling sooner or later. Yes, Mr. Farr, I'm listening. Six homing pigeons, PH. Not bad for a last collection. Very good, my dear. I say, this one's got a dollop in its beak. A check for 50 pounds from that woman in Exeter. You certainly can pile on the agony. Don't open them in the street, Vicky. All right, I just thought you'd like to know. And we'd like to know, too. It's a fair cop, son. I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you? Police officers, making an arrest. On what charge? Yes, what's the charge? False pretenses. A system of writing begging letters. Presenting yourselves as widows and orphans for the purpose of extracting money. I was deeply moved by your letter telling me of your husband's tragic death. Nothing can ease your grief, but I hope the enclosed check will help keep yourself and poor little Wendy out of Queer Street. Come along now, the car's waiting. to the post, Miss Benham. You get your toes trodden on again. I'll leave early, if I may, and post them opposite the flat. There's never a crowd there. Oh, very well. Where do you keep the uh, minor classics? Yes. Our shelves. May I look? Certainly.
that, sir. I'll see to it. You're Melville Farr, aren't you? Yes. Step in here, will you, please? How dare you come in my shop? Can't you leave me tomorrow in peace? I'm very sorry, Annette. What have your troubles to do with me? You ruined my life. Boy Barrett was happy here with me. I'd have taken him into partnership. He'd have had a home here. You destroyed all that. Do you realize what you did? I realize everything. Taken down and pocketed almost immediately, sir. Come on. There we are, sir. The money's in the shoulder bag. Will you get back to the station? Get out of your sunny suit. No use busting a cover. Right. Are you sure you'd recognize the youth on the Lambretta without his goggles, sir? Recognize him anywhere. Right. for a telescopic lens. Look at that, sharp as a knife. Only had half a minute to get it. How stupid can they get, picking up a boy in the park? Hmm. It's a pity we're going on a long vacation. Still, never mind. We'll keep the old gentleman on ice. I'm sorry to be through with Far. I'd enjoy making that fine, upstanding barrister jump. Ten days and I'm off. As usual, beautifully timed. A week's notice to poor old Doe and no attention drawn. Uh, uh, by the way, are we going to let our friend off the hook? We'll give him that impression. I told him to come over. Should be here soon. Of course, when we start our business again, we'll jerk the line a bit. Show him the photostats. Remind him the hook's still there. You really are a bit odd, aren't you? What do you mean? Well, I don't know. A sort of cross between an avenging angel and peeping Tom. They disgust me. When I found out about Mr. Doe and that boy, I felt physically ill. They're everywhere, everywhere you turn. The police do nothing, nothing. Someone's got to make them pay for their filthy blasphemy. We want you. Get inside there. Then what do you want to? What do you think you're doing? This is your private back. Get out of here. What's the matter? What is it? What does this mean? He's a Mark Metz. You're both under arrest. You'll be charged at the station. He's the one I told you about. You won't testify to that in court. Oh, yes, I will. I'll make a fine swan song to a big career. Eminent lawyers, astonishing private life. A real ball for the national press. That's enough. Very tough now, aren't we? When it comes to protecting perverts, I suppose the police force is riddled with it, like everything else. Shut up. On your feet. You're coming, too. He's all right. He's one of their victims. Ha! Huh. You hear that, Fip? You're a victim. I'm afraid you're barking up the wrong tree there, mister. It's a question of dog-eat-dog, dog, isn't it, Fip? It wasn't my fault. 
I couldn't pay them any more money. And then they said, if I gave the names of my friends, they'd give me back a letter every time. What do you think of our little Judas? Revolting spectacle, isn't he? Come on. One moment, please. Shoes. Coat. Ready. It's the ungodly in great power, all right. And flourishing like the green bay tree. And we'll have our say in court, though. On your feet. Move. Don't charge me under my real name. I've got money coming to me, quite a bit of money. I wouldn't mind sharing it. I'm not greedy. I'd sign the note. I'll walk him downstairs, sir. They're going to be very vicious when they do get into court, sir. Don't worry, Harris. I shan't let you down. No, sir. What do you think they'll get? With your evidence, the limit. Barrett's death and that little hairdresser Philip Henry are bound to wear against them. Well, I'm glad we've got them. It seems tragic that your career has to go west in the getting. Somebody once called this law against homosexuals the blackmailer's charter. Is that how you feel about it? I'm a policeman, sir. I don't have feelings. Well, if you'll come with me now, sir, it'll be helpful if we can have your statement right away. Yes. Just miss Mr. Patterson. Mr. Patterson. Mel. Mel. I... I didn't expect to see you here. What did William want? He came to tell me you've been to the police. I see. How long before the case becomes public? There'll be a remand at the magistrate's hearing tomorrow. I've got about uh, three weeks. Three days, you mean? You can't hope to keep this out of the press. It's not as though you can go into court as Mr. X. You're too well known. I don't want to. I believe that if I go into court as myself, I can draw attention to the fault in the existing law. Knowing it will destroy you utterly. Yes. We're going to need each other very much, aren't we? No, no. I'm going to go through this alone. I don't want you here when it happens. I started this thing. I've hurt you terribly, I know that. But I can just get through it to the end if you're not here to face the final humiliations. They're going to call me filthy names. My friends are going to lower their eyes, and my enemies say they always guessed. I don't want you a part of that Roman holiday. I love you too deeply for that. Shall I come back? You, um... You must have time to... <clears throat> you must have time to decide that for yourself. <clears throat> if you can... If you can bear to. Afterwards, when it's all over and the shouting stopped. Because it's then that I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you so desperately. Need? That's a bigger word than love. Suddenly, I feel very strong. Strong enough? I think so. <laughs> 